we've got. Okay, let's begin the Nantucket Conservation Commission meeting for October 1st, 2014. A couple of reminders, please turn off your cell phones and please take any extraneous conversations out in the hall. We are making an audio and a visual recording of this meeting and if you're, if you're going to record any other part of this meeting, you're required to let us know. With that, we'll go to the public meeting, public comment. Anything from the public that's not on tonight's agenda? Okay. Um, public hearing notices of intent. The following um, are continued to October 29th. The Lily Pond Realty Trust applications at 27, 29, and 31 North Liberty Street. Gun at 35711 and 15 East Tristan is continued to October 15. And Water's Edge Trust at 16 Madawi Creek Road is continued to October 15. So, with that, we go to Cumberland Farms at 115 Orange Street. Thank you for the record, Paul Stanfield with Nantucket Surveyors. Um, just to bring you up to date, we have revised our plans based on concerns that have been raised by some of the abutters. Um, we've refiled those revised plans with the state. We have received our DEP file number um, and the state, so the state has a complete package with regard to the stormwater policy standards. Um, and this is, uh, again, a notice of intent for work within land subject to coastal storm flow, which for the uh, proposal for the new Cumberland Farms. I will tell you that uh, the plan is evolving somewhat as we're still dealing with the planning board, still dealing with the HDC, uh, but I think from a, and we've, the abutters have, one of the abutters did reach out to me just recently and asked a few questions. I've answered those questions. I think we're fine and good to close here. If there's any substantial changes with regard to uh, the building shape, size, and or site format, Obviously, I would come back and, and provide that information as an, either an amended order or um, minor modification with regard to uh, to what the final site will end up looking like. Uh, but the drainage concept, we feel, is is not going to change. Um, the connection <coughs> Orange Street drainage system is not going to change. Um, it may be building size, and it may be some internal work with regard to the HTC and the planning board, and that's about it. Okay. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any other questions for Paul? Anything from the public on Cumberland Farms? Okay, Jeff, do we have everything we need to close? Yes, sir. Do I have a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All in favor. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Paul, oh, at 46 Shimmel Pond Road. I think last time we continued for a file number? I think so. Which we had received, and then we were clearing up um, some invasive species things, which have since been cleared up and have been included in the draft order that I was instructed to prepare. I don't think we had asked for any more information um, from before, and I think we have all the information we need um, that's been requested for this file, all the state information and things. So unless there's any additional questions, I don't see anyone's thunder. But that's kind of where we were on this one. They were just waiting for a file number. That's yes. my understanding. Could you just tell us very quickly what the project was again? Sure. Uh, Art Gaspar, Blackmore Associates for the applicant. Uh, this was the project that I represented uh, at the last meeting with um, uh, Cindy Gaynor. Oh, okay. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So this is the one for uh, the existing bulkhead and to mm -hmm. put a tube at the top of the bulkhead and to stabilize, vegetate, and do some invasive species control work. There's also um, uh, part of a response to an enforcement order for some cutting mm -hmm. that had been done. Mm -hmm. So just to clean that up as well. Okay, any other questions for Art? No, I don't think so. Anything from the public on Walsh? Hey, Jeff, we have everything we need to close the Yes, hearing. sir. 
You're ready to close, eh, Art? Move to close. Okay, do I have a motion to close? Move to close. Sorry. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nantucket Bond LL3 at C North Ave. Introduce them in the Associates. I have uh, an updated site plan, and I know realize it wasn't submitted by your Friday deadline, so I would like to present it, and then if you want to continue the hearing, uh, based on um, some of the discussion that had happened at the site visit about moving uh, the structure that was going to be renovated, I, I updated the plan, and I didn't want to present today information that was going to change. So understanding that it's new information, if you want it, you know, uh, we'd be more than happy to continue it, but I thought that I should at least get the project on the table since everybody's here and it's, it's advertised. Um, the project, <coughs> this is a notice of intent application um, for work within land subject to coastal storm flowage. The site is located down behind the Point Breeze Hotel and um, also for within uh, the buffer zone to a bordering vegetated wetland. Uh, the um, the, the wetland boundary has been flagged on, on site um, and as that's shown on the site plan and then we show the 25 to 50 foot buffer zone. I don't show the 100 foot buffer zone because it, it essentially encompasses the entire property. There's, there's three aspects of the project before you. Um, one is there's the uh, existing old uh, stable type structure that exists on the property. And uh, that's the, the longer structure along the south end of the property. Um, that's proposed to be lifted up, uh, a new foundation installed. Again, we're within the flood zone, so the, the um, first flow would be coming up um, about two and a half feet to uh, comply with the new flood zone elevation. And then what's proposed is new sets of stairs as well as a, a raised patio. Um, uh, to, that would be at the elevation of the um, uh, at the higher level, and a new porch as well within the, the patio area. Um, we have requested waivers for for this project for work within the 25 foot buffer zone, as well as for a structural area within the 50 foot buffer zone. The second aspect of the project has to do with there's an existing garage structure located in the um, north east corner of the property. And so we had been proposing to renovate that structure, and that's the portion of the plan that has changed since um, uh, the original filing. <coughs> At the site visit, it had been mentioned that it would be good to get away from the wetland some distance if, if possible so that um, we didn't actually have disturbance in the wetland in order to put that on a new foundation. So I've shifted the structure um, uh, away from the wetland from, from where it is right now that structure won't be lifted in terms of height to comply with the flood zone. It would be just a frost wall and a slab on grade. Um, and then a second story, or it's going to be a one and a half story structure. So then there would be um, uh, the living space or would be um, or usable enclosed space would be on the second story. So that would be above the flood zone for, for that aspect of the project. And then the third aspect of the project is there's um, extensive knotweed located throughout, throughout the property, throughout the buffer zone. So we're proposing to, um, um, to, to treat the, the knotweed uh, by a licensed personnel using best management practices. There's also knotweed located along the perimeter of the wetland. I'm going to leave with you and have submitted and have uh, prepared updated uh, the relevant pages for the notice of intent forms that fill in the area um, uh, for the invasive species control, which is basically I made an assumption based on the site visit that the knotweed doesn't go more than 10 feet into the, into the wetland itself. It seems like it gets very wet and doesn't really seem to support the knotweed. It seems to be right on the margin. So I did a calculation based on 10 feet in the wetland, inside of the wetland, and then um, um, the treatment in that area could be done with uh, however you specify, but with the rodeo as opposed to um, uh, 
the roundup. And again, with all of your standard reporting requirements um, in, in an order, however you want to condition it in terms of um, reporting volumes of uh, you know treatment dates and volumes and who was the licensed person that, that did the application. Um, we have, as I said, requested a waiver for the work within the buffer zone, the, within the 25 foot buffer zone, it's um, existing lawn area, um, long since maintained um, historical use of the property, and um, as well as for the work on the structure. The new structural elements that do exist that I would want to point out to you uh, is this porch, and then I think there, the, the patio is a bit subjective. Um, I, I'm not real clear on, to tell you the truth, whether that would fall into structure or landscape feature. It's a landscape feature is a patio, but now it's a raised patio, so I sort of put that out to you, that that is fit for you for your review in that area. The, I have discussed it with the applicants. They very much would, would like to have that. Again, it's within an existing lawn area. Um, to have that at that at that higher level than, than the lawn, it's a feature that they feel you know, not have an adverse impact and that they very much would like to have. And um, we've shown in the dark line the proposed sill fence and limits of work. There's no um, there's no grading work proposed, no filling again because it's land so, because it's land subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, no fertilizer, no irrigation proposed. Just maintain the, the, the lawn area that's there. And um, with that, I'd be happy to try to address questions or concerns. And as I said at the initial presentation, recognizing it's a new plan, we'd be more than happy to continue the matter for for two weeks if you wanted to as well. Any questions for Art? When we had the site visit across the lawn, it seemed to me there was a bunch of knotweed there. Yeah, so, so the knotweed control was throughout the buffer zone right. and not just the wetland. Right. Originally, when I wrote it up, I sort of showed it with arrows, meaning that it would be everywhere, but that's what I wanted to clarify with the forms. It's both the knotweed along the perimeter. Any, you know, again, knotweed is uh, a bit of a, a war, and so there's no sense leaving any of it if you hope to control right, it. Right, so right. Uh, it's a comprehensive approach to try to eradicate any and all knotweed that they can find. Can I ask, why aren't they, since they're knocking down that old building and building it and building a different structure, 1.5 story structure, yep. why didn't they just pull it out of the 25? They really want the structure where it is um, and didn't even want to really move it the five feet, to be honest with you. they told me that um, they feel that they want to have this, you know, maintain the open area of the lawn and that um, as an alternative to moving it, uh, should this really pose a problem even th this far, um, the other option would be to maintain the structure that's there and not, not necessarily go through the renovation. So um, I anticipated the question and so again, I, I am um, proposing it as some increases a benefit for what's there. There's no increase in the footprint, mm -hmm. um, but that's clearly you know uh, up to you. Well, it's a disturbing fresh area within the 25, even though it is further away from the wetland. I guess I would say, and I'm not trying to be accurate, but just mm -hmm. in my thinking on that, it's an equivalent area yeah, yeah. further away, and that's so. Yeah, it's long back there. And it, right, yeah, and but they could long. pull it another 50 yeah, feet. They They've got tons, I mean, regardless so, of what they want. So that's right. I, I, like I said, I did anticipate that that I would be. I wish the thought we allow somebody to do what they want. I would say we should be focusing on asking questions at this point and do our deliberating sort of after we get the information. Right, right. Well, I mean, you can argue that that previous structure was causing an adverse impact. I guess you're, you know, it's basically growing up around it on the back. It's probably getting pretty wet. Normally, when we have knockdowns within zero to 25, we ask them to move it completely out of the 25. I do agree that it helps to move it a little bit, but they're still going to be walking around behind that, so that's still going to be right. impacted. Right. Uh, the idea would be that the wetland itself would be disturbed. You would move the yeah. any impacts to the to the to the buffer zone from inside of the resource area. But mm -hmm. again, I, I, you know, let's just take the feedback and I can. Yeah, of course. There were um, 
I think, if I remember right, there was Phragmites back there as well, and some um, multiflora rows, and I just wondered if you wanted to be able to, if you've got somebody in to treat the exotics. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, um, the knotweed was so blatantly obvious, oh, that's yeah, what I sort of the, tripped uh, over yeah. and fell over, but sure, I, I'm sure that, um, you know, while we're hiring a professional, it only makes sense to do your best to restore to sort of your native type of land, um, uh, vegetation and landscape, so I, I'm sure that they would be more and than happy. And you can just get it all on one order, right. and if, you don't, if right. they don't want to do it, they don't have to right. do it. No, no, I would think that it would make it. the most sense to also get the... Yeah. That's something that would be very easy for us to well, and you condition. Should, yeah. Consider sure. that as mitigation for, I mean, they are, quote unquote, building in a new mm -hmm. section of the zero to 25, so something multi-flora rose removal and treatment would be, mm -hmm. would help uh, yeah, count toward thing. mitigation, because, sure. I mean, frankly, you, I think you need to have some kind of mitigation for that. Yeah, we would be well, certainly willing to, to, to take care of, again, all of the invasives as part of, I think, an overall net benefit approach. So it shouldn't be, yeah, it shouldn't be optional, it should be. Mm -hmm. Required, that's fine, yeah. I'm sure, that for this, that Mm -hmm. They would be willing to do that. I, I know that the, the structure in this location, maintaining the openness of the, mm -hmm. the lawn based on the discussions that I've had with them is very important. And then, I don't know, for that um, knotweed that's been mowed in the yard, if um, since it's in a grass base if um, the renovate might be a better choice for an herbicide in there because it would probably have less impact on the graminoid vegetation cover than the uh, I would glyphosate. defer to the professional on that yep. you know or well, how just they want put it in that's something that's put it in the order that's something that's simple to condition as well yeah. we can give them the choice for buffer zone areas Any other questions from the commission or the staff <coughs> on the red barn? The um, raised patio. Yes. You don't know. Do you know how that's being built? I mean, is it a? It would have a. It would be a solid fill, so a wall around yeah. the outside of it, fill it in, and then. Um, mm. uh, I'm sure. thinking that it would be dry laid bluestone. Yeah. But it's elevated. Elevated, right, by a couple of feet. So it's not a deck, it's going to be... That's right, right. it's going to be a patio, that's why I, because I, mm. um, they considered a deck, and I said then we'd really be into new structure. So, yeah. um, and the other thing that they really had wanted it down to this corner, and I, you'll notice that it goes right to the 25, mm. my suggestion was that, you know, to try to meet the concerns of the commission, not to put anything new in the, mm. in the 25 there. But it doesn't really work for the house to have it out of the 50 because of where the door is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it sounds like a non structural element on top of a structural. It's got like a retaining wall underneath it. Uh, that's correct. Well, I think from my sounds, is it's a retaining wall around the outside edge. It's mm -hmm. infilled with dirt. Mm -hmm. The patio is then put on top of the dirt. Mm -hmm. right. So, really, for us, the structural element is the outer retaining wall right. Right. and then there's the interior it's fill but it was it's still a patio so I I agree with art it's kind of a hard one to mm -hmm. right I could be structural or non-structural I mean, I could update the plan to show the wall and calculate that area if that was well, we could also it. contemplate the uh, concept of adverse impacts and but when, if you're going to write a waiver, you're going to want to give them the appropriate waiver because someone else is going to go, well, you let these people build a wall. It, that doesn't mean it doesn't cause adver that it might match our, our um, limit for not causing adverse impacts, but we should write it into their, into their order. If we call it a structure, we should call it a structure. That doesn't mean it's causing adverse impact, but if we're going to give them the waiver, we should write it appropriately. And I, it sounds to me like a structure with a non-structure on top of it, which means we should, if we feel like it's permissible, just write a waiver mm -hmm. for a structure with them. You know. Well, it, it definitely portions of it are definitely going to require a waiver just for the, right. the, fill, the fill. Yeah, just for the, well, there's the porch, 
that right. comes off, mm -hmm. uh, and then whatever retaining wall. So there's going to be waivers for that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you guys decide to grant it. For that entire area is going to be a, a waiver area. It may just be how the square footage breaks out for what's compliant and what is waiver required. Well, anything else? Well, I just wonder if we should leave this open in case there's some public comment. Or I think since we're not going to be issuing an order on this tonight, obviously, anyways. Mm -hmm. um, be, I'd be happy to request that we take just okay. for that reason to not have it be brushed because I did come in with a new plan. Yeah. So so can give us a little more detail on the patio of what yep. the structure is going to be? It's kind of our new elements on the plan. And stuff. Cool. Okay, Art, so you want to continue until the um, 15th? Also, I hear an objection. We'll continue this to the 15th. Okay. So okay. We, thanks, Art. Okay, Walpole, Drive Arbor Way. Again, the applicant is at Far Black Associates. Uh, this is another uh, project located um, uh, in the Brant Point area. This is the old, uh, what we just referred to as the old tennis courts property uh, that had been rent, um, redeveloped, if you will, a few years back, as many of you may remember. Um, the resource areas were at the bottom of a coastal bank uh, as opposed to the top, but I have shown the um, sort of reverse setbacks, if you will, to the toe of the bank um, as an offset to um, uh, a resource area. There's also a small piece of a vegetated wetland located in the southeast property corner. And this entire site is located within land subject to coastal storm flowage. The um, uh, scope of the application is to put two one-story additions onto the existing structures. Um, and the, um, one of them is located, and it's shown in pink on the plans, one of them is located um, outside of any um, buffer zone, but within land subject to cold storm flowage. And then the other one uh, to, is located outside of the 50 foot buffer zone to both the bank and the um, uh, vegetated wetland, uh, but is within the 100 foot buffer zone. I did request a waiver for just the, uh, there won't be a basement, but there would, again would be a frost wall on footings and, uh, in this area. The chances are that those footings would be within two feet of groundwater. So that's the only waiver that's that's been requested, and any dewatering would only be temporary in nature. And um, with that, that's I don't think there'd be any adverse impact. Again, the square footage is, is very small, and they're located within maintained maintained areas uh, on the property. Outside the 50. So. Any questions for Art? Anything from the public on Walpole? Okay, Jeff, do we have everything we need to close the hearing? Yes, sir. Move to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. That carries unanimously. Thank you. The orders in continue. Um, Otto at Four Branch Point Road. <coughs> Nathan McMullen for Mel and John Morrow. Um, Don Bracken is currently re determining the base flood elevation and elevation of the finished first floor and also required number uh, amount of uh, areas for operable flood vents. Steve Gill, our structural engineer, is, will stamp the structural drawings. It's for a 390 19, 319 square foot addition on poured concrete 
foundation at the south. along the south, and at the north area is 234 square feet on two sauna tubes and to the other sauna tubes that are here. The entire lot is um, 25,274 square feet. Uh, the land is in a coastal resource area subject to coastal storage, storm flo floodage, flooding of course, and um, there is no Mesa review. Right. No other resource areas? Nope. This is land subject to coastal storm flowage only. Okay. Well, any questions? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming the same foundation as everything else. Mm -hmm. so. Anything from the public on auto? Okay. Um, so. Jeff, do we need to wait for other plans to come in if they're still No, we have stamp plans that are this there. Is all <laughs> That's just the uh, architectural plans. Okay. Okay. Um, this is just the one that for you guys that just shows the additions the clearest. We, we do have proper elevations. Uh, yes. Okay. In that case, do I have a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Right. Any opposed? Back here is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, amended orders of condition. Uh, I may ask Mr. Chairman, I know Mr. Enoch was going to come for this one this evening, but if we may be able to jump to certs and then come back. Okay, come back um, to the amended order. Sure. Okay. Because we're going pretty fast. Yeah, we mm -hmm. are. Yeah. So, it's a simple night. If he's not here shortly thereafter, <laughs> I can handle it for him, but mm -hmm. I'll give him this chance. Okay. Okay, so we'll. Go into the public meeting and do certificates of compliance. Parker at 30R Union Street. It's a reissue. Yep, this one is a reissue. Again, like most reissues, well, we've issued it once before. Um, it was never recorded, and the original now has um, disappeared. Um, so we did a reinspection of the site and found no issues, and would recommend that this could be reissued. I have that motion. Second. Uh, motion to uh, approve. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moved. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? That motion carries unanimously. The Nantucket Property Trust at 13 Hollowell Lane. All right, this is one, Mr. Chairman. I'm actually going to ask that we continue this. Um, we got some photos, and I was expecting the plan to come in for this, and we didn't get it yet, so. It's a project that involves some grading, so I'm going to need that stamp plan. So, okay. We just need to continue with it if we could. Sure. I've not completed my site evaluation. Here. I'll put it that way. So, unless I hear an objection, we'll just continue this for two weeks. Okay, yeah, so be it. Um, Oak Hill Investments, 2 Franklin Street. All right. You guys this will, one was, yeah. will remember this one. This is the one that originally stemmed from an enforcement action um, and then kind of turned into a project mm -hmm. that's there. They've completed the construction of both the replantings of the wetland, replanting of the buffer zone. Um, that's sat through most of this last growing season, and now they've also completed the construction of the buildings and then the landscaping around the buildings. So they've completed the physical part of the project. Uh, and truth be told, I don't know if anyone's seen it recently, mm -hmm. the wetland that's there actually probably looks better than it has ever. Or mm -hmm. I don't want to say ever, but since I've been familiar with this site, I think it actually has come out rather nice. Um, that being said, everything there is built in compliance with what our original plan of record showed. Um, however, if you guys choose to issue the cert, I would recommend that we have ongoing commission mm -hmm. condition number 20, which is the continued requirement of the monitoring point for the full mm -hmm. three years since we've just completed the first year, um, to have the next two years continue to see what's going forward, and then we can kind of still keep that coming in with their reporting to mm -hmm. make sure that that wetland is still doing okay. But other than that, the project is, is nice, and it's nice to see wetland, rep not replication, but restoration actually get planted and done correctly. This was the property that had that little weird seep in it? Yeah, it had the weird <laughs> seep in it. It was the one that split in half. we spent 
a great deal of time doing mm -hmm. soils work on mm -hmm. to find the boundary and found that interesting vein of clay that kind of mm -hmm. undulated through the site and mm -hmm. caused this depression there and caused a little uh, freshwater seepage and breakout in the one spot. Um, was the site that was pretty heavily disturbed when we first got there. Clear, mm -hmm. clear, it was uh, clear. Totally. And, truck through so mm -hmm. uh, I think all in all given the situation that it was in it's actually turned out rather mm -hmm. successfully at this point but I would this agree is one with grading and planting is taking place in the layout of Franklin Street uh, there was grading and planting in the within the layout of Franklin Street the curbing was shown mm -hmm. on our plant and things that were there um, the curbing and that issue is not really an issue of our commission it's more of a, a planning and traffic safety issue. But the curbing was shown on our plan. Our original plan. I'm, I'm a little confused. Do we have the original? Yes. We do. Because there was some concern about Correct. Uh, so what happened was the keeping the, the curbing, condition is super important. Well, curbing was installed on the existing edge of the pavement. You guys remember that area before was used as parking onto the lot. So on the original plan of record, on the edge of Franklin Street, they showed the apron and they showed the curbing on our plan. So it's been approved through our office. And kind of the uproar that was there was the loss of some loss of parking. parking. Yeah. Um, I don't want to sound callous by saying this, but well, a noble concern, not necessarily a concern of the Conservation Commission. So well, we, no, yet what is a concern of the Conservation Commission, and we face this on the eastern end of the island when we have uh, projects that, uh, erosion control projects, and they abut sort of town property down on the beach, and uh, the, the requirement for having the, uh, the property owners be uh, part of the application of the applicants, and uh, what we're what we seem to have approved here is work that is done on this site and also work that is done off of this site uh, without the uh, without any uh, participation in the hearing from the uh, property owners, whoever they would be, whether that's the town of Nantucket or the abutters of Franklin Street. And so it would seem to me that we're potentially applying a standard sort of differently uh, on uh, one case versus another case. And I would think that that's something we always want to be careful about. Mm. Well, what's in our packet doesn't show the curbing. So what, what we have no, here... No, what's on our plan of record here that's on the table. Yeah. That we... we <coughs> help so me out with the law and how it applies, Jeff. What did we... This is what we approved? That is the approved plan. Yes, sir. And so we approved... Uh, by virtue of there being... Um, elements sketched on this plan that are not on the property of the applicant. Uh, we are approving work to be done on somebody else's property or we're not? Legally, we only approved what was on that parcel. We, we approve what's on the parcel that's been applied for. Yeah, they didn't apply. So then what do we have, a violation? We have work done on a parcel that we haven't approved? Well, I'll, I'll see. I, I guess my difficulty is, and I, I understand your perspective, is I, I think it's rather unreasonable for an applicant to come in to do lot that has the act the ability to pass and repass and access onto the road we would literally have every application coming in with a property owner signature from anyone that abuts a road or the town for any driveway that ties into any public way um, because they I, I know of no driveway I understand and I also understand that sometimes to, to maintain curbing against the edge of a road is something that we, if it's within the road, haven't been something that we've typically targeted as a specific issue no. for what's there. No, but when you have grading and planting and whatever took place between the property line and the curbing here, uh, we have more going on than a... It seems to me that we probably would want to do something with our regulations at the right time that allows this business of access over when you're getting out into a, to get onto the road. I get that for the driveway. Um, and yet, when you have sort of a sod lawn and privet heads or whatever you have going on down there, 
um, when we look at, well, I think it's something we want to be, we want to, we want to think about how we apply our regulations consistently in similar cases. We have, we have yes. each project stands on its own merits, uh, and yet we have quite a bit of work here being done that's not on this property. And have we permitted it? Or are we not? And if we haven't, then we have unfinished permitted work going on. And that's a little bit of a dicey thing, I think. Who buys that? Anybody? I would say. I'm all on my own? No, no, I understand. I, know what you're saying. I would say that we yeah. only permitted what was applied for in the parcel under consideration. I mean, it we does matter in Wisconsin when they want to work on town land, doesn't it? That they, it matters just, anywhere. It doesn't yeah. matter. Okay. Yeah. No, I would agree with that. Yeah. I don't think if it's on a parcel not under consideration, not applied for in the permit, just because it's on the plan doesn't mean that we're approving of it. Um, and this might be parsing that we would need. You know, to get a second opinion on, but I think that whatever we're approving is just on the parcel under question. When you apply for a parcel, that's why we try to discourage people from applying for multiple parcels because you do have to have the signature of each person. In this case, I would agree. If we were approving what was done in Franklin Street, we'd need the town signature of others. But just because it's on the plan doesn't mean we approve it. And um, this, what I was pointing out to Jeff, is on the new plan he just gave us in our packet. Thinking about returning an order certificate. Was that am I doing that? No. Uh, that's David. You're doing that. Be careful. Just deaf and tap on. Uh, <laughs> the the asphalt the they show is for the work on the parcel applied for. Which is just yeah, it doesn't show the work that he's it doesn't done. show the work out the street. So, it is. I think so that would that be an enforcement order or something. I mean, if they've done work in the buffer zone, because it looks like the buffer zone probably it's going to be very close to the property line. Also, it was required by the town, and then it's like, I mean, assuming it was required by the town, and, and they probably put it in there in the notation as part of the application, whether it was done or not. It seems more like a town issue to me. Yeah. If the town yeah, wants to maintain so. those parking spots, then the, the town regulates the parking on Franklin Street. That's there, and for spots to I go away. I wouldn't for a moment suggest that we get into that question. No, it, 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 no. The, well, the question that that's there is we're we're dealing with an issue that was raised before about that land being unfairly used and curbed off when they're holding an existing edge of pavement and before, I mean, if we really wanted to nitpick, people were parking on a private piece of land. Mm -hmm. And those parking spaces have gone away mm -hmm. and now... And that wouldn't be our jurisdiction. That's not our issue. That's either. not so we within our... Get, we often get that going on at this table with yeah. issues mm -hmm. that, are, that are... Yes. But we ignore it like we just did with Cumberland Farms. I mean, I think we're really good about not getting involved in and parking issues or traffic or things like that, unless there is a environmental reason or siltation or something like that. Yeah, and this thing, I, I think whatever we put on our certificate of compliance should just match whatever we are. Well, the issuing. certificate is also specific to the parcel. Exactly. So it is specific to 41, 268, and 269. It's a merged parcel now. In other words, we're not approving or disproving anything on a, a parcel. In the public way. Yeah, in the public way. All right, but it is in front of us and on the table here now that we've had, we have that going on in, in a, uh, within the buffer zone to a vegetated wetland. Mm -hmm. And I guess I would ask the question then from our perspective, is a parking lot or a grassy buffer better for the wetland? And if they came in with and wanted to do this, would we say, yeah, we should get the cars out of the buffer zone? Are you talking about the section right here? Or are you talking about Yeah, out, out in, probably out in. Because it's not establishing any parking there. It's actually. No, it's taking there. away parking. That's what I'm it's saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think, even if we consider that part of work done in the buffer, I don't think it's causing an adverse impact. Not in this case. It's probably causing an improvement. Mm -hmm. I just I wouldn't even refer to it necessarily because it's not the parcel we're considering. Yeah. The 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 curbing and things that are off parcel aren't included in the order of conditions. Exactly. Is it shown on the plan? Something that was installed and then mm -hmm. our order referenced the work that's specific to the parcel. Mm -hmm. So what well, is what's in our package? Just the parcel. Yeah. 
Well, it's an Can you do a privet hedge and running all the way down the curve as well? Does anybody know? No, there is not. It should side lawn up to the up to the granite curve. There's a in the section to the I guess what would be to the west of the driveway. There's fencing, and then there's some grass that's maintained to the curb, and then on the eastern side, there's the same fence that kind of runs along the, the the 25 to keep people out of the the other area. And then there's some grass on the outside of the fence, and then the brush on the inside of the fence. The fence runs along that northernly proper line. So the fence is on the property line. Yes. So you have the fence. You have the fence within the in the 25 foot buffer. Yes. Is it a split rail? Yes. Yeah. So it's not a structure. And the fence was installed specifically to keep people out of the wetland and the vegetated buffer right. that was there. Well, I think we should we should let's focus on the parcel and. <laughs> See if we can issue an order on that, and then if we want to continue, oh, we're issuing a certificate of compliance a certificate, for, yeah. this, is for this. Is was it built in compliance with our order? So some of this is um, though applicable. If it was built with what they said they could build, and that's the end of the story. Mm -hmm. Whether they still like it or not, I know there's a ton of things that come up. That I'm like, wow, we said yes to that, but if they built it, the, they built what they said they were going to build, and we should. The asphalt plan matches the plan that's in front of you. We should issue the certificate. Do I have a motion to issue the certificate of compliance? So moved. Second. All in favor. Just discussion, then just shortly, Mr. Chairman. I don't want to beat on it and belabor it. We'll come back to it. Uh, but no, but I do want to discuss on the motion. So okay. I do want to have a clear record. Okay. Uh, because of, because I, I'm, I'm afraid that I believe the commission is being inconsistent in its approach here. When we have we have a situation uh, where I, I believe that's been accurately described, mm -hmm. that uh, we're being asked for the certificate on this parcel, yet we have this other nebulous work that is taking place outside of this parcel that we haven't yet discussed where the commission is on that, and uh, the commission's leverage is with the certificate of compliance, just as it would be with an enforcement order in front of us. And when we have had disagreements and, and sort of uh, things have uh, risen out on the uh, wetland replication out on the Hunt Road, or we have people watching like a hawk if somebody's going off their property line on other projects. Um, I don't think it's appropriate to issue the certificate until we resolve that, which is why uh, I'll be voting no, and I just want to have a clear record. Mm. Well, I'm just trying to think what we would do about this. Typically, we'd raise it with either the butters or the towns we would make a point of pointing this out and say, are you aware of this? Is there an issue? Is there a lease, is no. easement, whatever? And if they wanted, either the town or ourselves wanted to file an enforcement order, we would. But that doesn't have any legal bearing on whether or not the work was done on the parcel with, in accordance with the order of conditions. Which no, is but that, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And the certificate of compliance issued on this property that they're looking to sell uh, is where our leverage is. Once we let go of that, we don't have any... We know how difficult it is to get the DPW's attention, and we know um, how difficult it is to get applicants in front of us when there's a when there's a violation. And so I think if we would like to hear from this applicant about what what he proposes about that land that isn't his, that we ought to just defer this for two weeks and ask to hear from him and take it all up then. Well, what do people think of that? Well, we could just hold the vote on the cert, and if it doesn't go, then I mean, do what you. I, my my thought is, if we're gonna, if we want to do something about that, if that's on town property, mm -hmm. then it's gonna be we're gonna have to have the town come in and do something with the DPW yeah. on that. Well, we're gonna have to have the applicant who wants the cert here, who actually did that work, come in and say he's been out to talk to DPW and he proposes to do X, Y, and Z, or A, B, and C, or nothing at all. And say back at you guys, what do you, you know, push the point, or just where is he on this stuff? We could just hear from somebody. Wouldn't you argue yeah. that the DPW as an applicant, weren't they a, a, a notified as an abutter? Didn't they have their day in court to complain? I don't know. Which I mean, why that's standard on well, the projects? They, yeah, they, I mean, <laughs> everything's released with they, the abutters list, so everybody well, gets that's, them. Public ways aren't listed on an abutters list. They don't okay. get noticed because they're not. 
a taxable parcel. I do know the DPW is aware of everything that's gone on on Franklin Street. Sure. They've gone out and seen it. I mean, my concern is for, for stuff that's gone on as far as a, a tie into a road and a traffic safety issue, that for everything that's there, I mean, I don't want to go down a path of getting signatures and sign-offs from every utility that we're tied in. We tied into sewer, and that's the public that. road. I, I, I got that we that. don't, I'm we don't require that. We tied into the electric in the road, and yeah. we don't require the sign-off for yeah. that portion. I mean, it's. Yeah. I, I understand the point, but I, I don't think that it's, I, I know it's kind of a, a, a scale of magnitude. It's not necessarily a project that's taking place on a town-owned or public piece of land. There's a portion of it that services the, the private parcel that's there that's within a public way that they have access and rights in mm -hmm. to maintain those things in. And I think they've done everything in accordance with normal practices held for tying into the public public road and the public utilities. I don't think everybody does that. I mean, they take their lawn to the sidewalk, even if the sidewalk is... <coughs> I would hardly say it's... Layout. I mean, it, it's a lawn that's really to allow more for passage of people between the fence and the curb mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than it is for anything else. I mean, mm -hmm. we can certainly have them come in and talk about it, and we can get the DPW in. I'm not going to argue that, but it's... Well, I, I would think maybe we just let the DPW know what's there, and Jeff, if you could call oh, Clara I, and just... I have been on the site with the DPW. Oh, I so they are, they are aware of it. They are aware of it. They've always been aware of it. We've had plenty of... We needed to uh, belabor it, and I, I'll, I'll try very hard not to, but I think the idea that the DPW knows about it is not a standard that we would halfway agree with out on the eastern end of the island. We demand that they... We hire other engineers to check their engineers for other, th other, other sorts of things. I, that just seems bizarre to me. I can't see the harm in asking this uh, in asking this proponent what he proposes to do about this and taking this up again in two weeks. I don't well, know. Well, let's why see. We let's let's take the vote on the. Let's have a motion to issue the order. If it, I think which we do have, we've discussed it. Let's take a vote, and if the mo motion doesn't carry, then we don't issue the order, and we can ask him to come in. But that's all I'm asking for. Your okay. call is let's not let's not issue this tonight. That's all okay. I'm saying. Okay, so all in favor of issuing the order, say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Aye. So we've got three, four, four, and two opposed. That motion carries. So two or three, three opposed. Dave, were you an aye? I was an aye. You were an aye, okay. Oh, so Andy? Andy? I was four, aye. Right, so aye. that's three and three. Three and three. Three and three. Who three else was opposed? Aye. Uh, it was Where's David Sarah? David Bam. Oh, oh, Mr. Sarah Bam. I'm sorry. I so I voted no. Where's so you're Sarah the on this? you're the tiebreaker. Uh, right? I'm, I said we should issue the order. Okay. So it's four to three. Four to three. But thanks for the discussion. Yeah. I think yeah, it, it was a, helpful. It is a good point. Okay. I think it's. I think it was an interesting point to make. I think it was important to discuss it. I appreciated you bringing it up. That's what I'm mm -hmm. saying. Hans Holden LLC, 10 Charles Street. All right. This is one we all drove past for field hearings this week. Can put on uh, the code next minute. This was for our front <coughs> the corner of. Charles and North East Street. That was for the construction of the two structures on that lot within the buffer zone on this side, the vegetated wetland, and the flood zone as well. Can you bring that closer to any of this? Um, <laughs> so, what do you so this is the one, just to remind everyone, they had a waiver for the stairs in this portion of the 50 to come through, but it was work in the flood zone. Um, and those things under there. That's just one street. Yep. 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 So the trophy shape, the concom offices, right there, right over here. Right the here. Okay. So again, this is shown as designed and approved. Any ongoing conditions or anything on this? No, this one didn't have any monitoring or anything that was there. It's just pretty straightforward. 
project was kind of a bit. That last one we didn't lose the ongoing condition. Oh, that is correct. We did not. Okay, so is there, there's no discussion on this. I have a motion to issue the certificate of compliance for cons holding. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That carries unanimously. Okay, so, um, you know, Bob? Well, we can either do the amended order no. or we can do the regular order. Let's just do that. Why don't we just keep going down the page here? So we're at order of conditions. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so I just want to take one and pass them over. Okay, orders of conditions. First one is Walsh at 46 Colonel Pond Road. Really interesting one. Yeah, this is the one that uh, we were just talking about earlier today. We just closed. Yes. So most of the conditions that are on there relate to the invasive species treatment that's there. And um, then there's some monitoring things, but. Really think of any conditions for the the tubes. I mean, they're really there just to stabilize. And this is a, a solid filled, no, sand filled core tube. It's not yep, the one at the bottom is sand filled, and then the two on the slope are, are just, just core logs. Core logs to kind of hold the slope that are mm -hmm. staked in place. We'll get kind of covered and planted over, and then just allowed to kind of degrade. Can you do okay? You have a report, okay? And you should have a report on the success of the planting and stuff. Is that included here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. And were they supposed to clear the plants and like the soil mixture she was going to use with the office first? Uh, the plants, yes. And that's the uh, number 19. The all species to be planted shall be uh, native non invasive species, and a planting list shall be provided to commission staff prior to. And they also we kind of talked about um, some more Fungal. clarification on the um, mycorrhizal fungi. Oh, mm hmm. Yes. So we'll change that to um, a planting list and injection. She's and actually doing that. Treatment. Inoculation. Inoculation, yes, thanks. Um, specification. Not doing any physical work on the bulkhead itself. It seems to nope, be good that's shape. in good shape. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I have a motion to issue as amended? So moved. Second. All in favor. <coughs> Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries unanimously. To be honest, I was kind of stumped for conditions on mm. this one. It's a pretty straightforward, I mean, it's in the flood zone. So it says something where sometimes we've asked for stormwater reports throughout the year. Do you think that's necessary? Um, I mean, we could add a 19 to require any operation and maintenance agreements on the stormwater system. Well, do they make a regular report to Dave or to anyone for? This big of a storm war? Okay. Probably not. Well, I don't need that one in. Necessarily. Sometimes yeah, that reporting is sometimes that reporting is triggered by the DEP policy. In this case, it is not. Like Cambridge mm. Street, you know, yeah. it was something we wanted to see because they had such a involved storm water drain system. You want yeah. to make sure. Well, this one is one that's it, with it tying into the municipal mm -hmm. um, system that it doesn't have the same discharge component mm -hmm. like the one that Cambridge Street does. I think yeah. that's what triggers some of that reporting. Okay. Today. Otherwise, it is just a full-blown project. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that looks good. Do I have a motion to issue? So moved. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That carries unanimously. That arbor spelled two different okay. ways. Um, Walpole on Arbor Way, five Arbor Way. Did I really do it? I'm not sure which one is right, but we're not. There's a different place. Well, there's a little British at the top and yeah, yeah, American and at the bottom. That's what I was going to say. I will, check, I will check my spelling as I always do. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, in the other order, it's spelled with an O. So, oh, with a U, I mean. Again, this is another one. Uh, I did have a mistake on this one. Sorry, I forgot to include. They requested waivers for the two foot separation to groundwater. Mm -hmm. Under no adverse impact, no reasonable alternative. So that's pretty standard. Add a few things, so choose. There's nothing else. Do I have a motion to issue as amended? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank <coughs> you. Okay. Yeah, it's a nice night. For Brent Point Road. Same as the other two yeah. points on the project. You don't really want. This is for those two small additions. There's no change in filling or anything. No work. waivers required. Nope. Or requested. Mm -hmm. Moved to issue as drafted. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That carries unanimously. Okay. What else do we have to discuss here? I think we have. Um, well, maybe not. That's it. That's it. I don't think we have anything else to. Who are you waiting for? Bobby Mac. Yeah, yeah. No. I think you're going to be presenting for him. Um, he's not the hugest fan of this, but um, this is a kind of strange one too. It's going ahead. Okay, we'll go back to the um, amended order of conditions at Swan Head LLC, 71 Farm Road. All right, so it's fine. Okay, here. It's for the installation. There. They would like to amend the order of conditions for the installation of the pool on the left-hand side of the property, on the western side, eastern side, here, uh, with a patio surround and then the pool fence is the red line and the pool equipment is there. Um, all of the structural elements of that are all lo located outside of the 50 foot setback to the wet one. Yeah, so the 50 runs just through here and so the pool fence is there. Um, that's just a... That's a, a planting area. Oh, this is the question. And then there's the the retaining wall that's there. You can see the retaining wall end on this side. Before it gets to the 50, there's the fence. And the remainder of that that's outside of the 50 foot. There's some grading that does go. So this was proposed grade 38. It does cross inside the, the 50, but all the work that's proposed is outside of the 25. The original uh, work that was done was the, uh, some of the, the renovation to the buildings, to the cottages of this building here, and they're adding all the cool components to their order. Mm -hmm. So the amended order is to add in this pool? Yep, so the amended order would be for the in-ground swimming pool, uh, pool equipment, the bluestone pool deck, uh, lawn, the uh, retaining wall, and the pool fence. Um, that's the 50? Yes. And you said this little red part on the west side coming down, that's a planning area? Correct. Yeah, it's just like on the south side of the pool. It's just like a, a flower planting bed? Yeah. Some sort of landscape. Yes. Probably to hide the pool bed from the house, you might guess. Probably hydrangeas. 
think everywhere else on hands. Any other questions or comments? Is, is that is that private way a paved road or dirt road or non-existent road that wraps around them? Uh, it's it's on paper. If you look real close, okay. you can kind of see where the driveway comes in. Yeah. The driveway kind of comes oh, up. Oh, yeah, right down the bottom corner. Yeah, yeah up here, through yeah. kind of splits the wetlands. Yeah. It comes in. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a weird yeah. um, a weird spot out in Squam. Oh, okay. It's one of those shared driveways with a bunch of places yeah. on it. Okay. Yeah, I think a lot of that was originally put in and then just uh, hasn't been used or been abandoned mm -hmm. over time and just easements are still lingering around. A lot of people are reluctant to give those up even if they've been Oh, abandoned. yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so do we need a motion to close the hearing and issue the amended order? Yes. Yes. Do I have that motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries unanimously. So Bobby owes you beer. Probably going to be him that walks in. I know. Well, I, know. I wish I could walk in every time and have my job all done. That'd be good. Find a bill. Okay, so we go to other business. No minutes. <laughs> Reports. CPC. Uh, we're meeting, uh, it seems like, all the time to get these applicants in, and uh, we've got to divide. There's uh, $7 million worth of applications, and we have about $2.4 million, <laughs> so this is going to be tough. Hmm. Any idea on the state match on that? On, on, uh, they, they haven't issued that yet. That's the estimate, including the state match. It's, two, hmm. it's, it's way down, apparently. Not, not that I know much about that. I'm not really a money person. But, but, uh. <laughs> well, real quick, I, I hate to jump in, but the thing that we talked about is that some of you um, I'll have a couple new enforcements for you guys at the next meeting. One of them just got reported for search side of me. You missed it, Bob. We already finished Sorry, it for Bob. you. <laughs> um, yeah, we denied it because you weren't here. <laughs> no, 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 we approved it. We approved it. Uh, but I'll bring those four. So, oh, thanks for coming. If you guys finish up, that's fine. I don't have anything else to add. Couple hours. So, you're going to have two enforcements for us next. Yes. Okay. I just have to finish up. I might have to call in next time. I just that's fine. That so you're on here. Huh? Uh, yeah, I got summoned into the select meeting, so I'll be, I'll be around. They're starting at five. No, other pre thing, pre thing. Okay. okay. So, okay. okay. Thanks, Jeff. No problem. Sorry, I'm just sneaking out. I'm just amazed we got everything else done before. Yeah. Okay, NPDDC. Nothing. Okay. Mosquito <laughs> control. Get out of the season. Uh, they're just now finishing up, and uh, they're, since we now have a mosquito district, we're going to get reappointed for, and we're trying to figure out if the terms are for one or two years. And I'm happy to relinquish my seat if everyone, anyone wants it. And I'm happy to serve if no one wants it. Okay. Anything else? Or any commissioner's comments? Mike. I do, Mr. Chairman. Um, most of which I've already made, but I guess I'm left curious and puzzled by this commission's action. Um, so when we have spec builders kind of pushing the boundaries of jurisdictional issues and doing things uh, in areas where it's not permitted, and we go ahead and issue, uh, give away the leverage that we have to sort of get any explanation from them, under the standard that the DPW was aware is baffling to me. Mm. And I uh, hope you won't uh, be too scornful when we uh, next figure out what to do uh, in our indefensible position out there on Wisconsin Beach. And I suggest that all of our talk about getting the paperwork in order in the town, that as long as the DPW is aware that it's okay. I think well, I think they're very different issues. Well, no doubt. Mm -hmm. No doubt. They are. It just seems a funny standard for us to be applying. When we issue that cert, I mean, I understand what you're saying. When we issue that cert, we're only approving the work done on that lot. We're not approving work done anywhere else. 
some. When we issue I mean, we, an enforcement we order. We can still, we still. Well, we can, but the only thing that gives the enforcement order any teeth, we could ultimately find somebody, but what gives an enforcement order teeth is it has an open, uh, an open attachment to the property, and it can't be transferred without clearing it up. We just signed that away. Yes, but legally case. I think we, we had to. I agree morally maybe or, or, or um, strategically, but legally. I think legal there are two different issues. I think that there – I mean, I understand what you're saying, though, that as far as the, the one way we can hold a applicant's feet to the fire is not to issue them a cert. To hold that for two weeks would, do, would, would not be a great egregious – True. Thing, I mean, unless there's something pending, if there was representation here, the, the thing can't transfer. I, I, I'm unaware of anything right, right. like that. So to hold it for two weeks and just ask the guy, what do you think? Seems to me, well, and, I, and I, I don't mean to be repetitive, but I, but I do need to say that I'm just astounded at what we've done because it seems to me that that's the way to get the guy's attention, to put him on notice, to figure out, you know, what is the right thing to be there, whether having the grass on the curb within the 25 feet to the, to the uh, 25 feet of the, of the area is appropriate or not, but we could just figure it out on its merits. And and that guy would be on notice. He's going to be doing other projects, and, and, and projects are all more and more constrained. And rather than the DPW was aware of it, so I'm, I'm, I'm sort of sliding off, would be like, let's just, let's not only comply with the letter or the law, but let's, let's, just, let's just be aware of what, the, what we're trying to do here and pay attention to it. And it just seems to me we've done a giant step backwards on it. I guess, I guess for me it seemed, again, like it was work that was an improvement on the site. It wasn't... Uh, the unpermitted work. The unpermitted work. Yes, you are. Well, it was permitted. Yes, and so you're going ahead and making the, you're going ahead and making your judgment on the unpermitted work. All I'm saying is, I mean, you know, be, I'm all for let people do what they want to do if it isn't going to be detrimental to the area, but I, but, but within, you know, within the regulatory process, not just go ahead and do it and ask for forgiveness later. But we don't really have jurisdiction on abutting lots. Mm -hmm. When somebody puts no, something, yeah, yeah, absolute jurisdiction we can still a, issue an, a, of a, of, of a wetland. if we, if we abutting issue lots. an enforcement order on them, lots. that would be no, an, an enforcement order on the town. The not on the, absolute jurisdiction. I'm, not, I'm saying, but the app, but the, Notation on the plans was not on the lot. Mm -hmm. It was on the application, and then it was. Um, well, let's say you had a let's say you had a, a, a neighboring house outline, and there was a deck on that uh, on that outline deck, and say that deck was illegally built. So, are we approving that deck because it's on the drawing on the, on the adjacent part of lot? The project. I I just think we'd be saying, wait a minute. You know, if it, if it was a, so if it was nuclear waste dumped into the wetland, what would we be saying? In this case, that that. Uh, uh, that work that was done was shown on the original application, mm -hmm. and it was for one reason or another omitted mm -hmm. from the from the uh, plan for the certificate of compliance. No doubt, because somebody had figured out on account of the public discussion out there that we weren't going to in any way going to going to be approving that work, and so it was just omitted. And so we're left now with we're mm -hmm. issuing a certificate of compliance on that on that work that's been on the lot in front of us, yes, I agree that that work is in compliance. I just disagree with issuing the certificate tonight. I thought we had the leverage to get the guy in here to say, come on, how about cooperating with what we're trying to do? And uh, if we don't care about that, we don't care about that. The next time we come up with uh, somebody saying, the next well, time we come up with... What would you ask him to do, Mike? Uh, I would ask him the same thing that we always do, is to come in and explain uh, the impact of what you've done and on this unpermitted work and what you and what you intended to file a notice tells us what you're going to do about it. And it could be done under the open notice before, under the open project before we did anything. Well, he couldn't do it under that project because he, the town would have to come in for a notice in that case. So now we're getting into, you know, what we'd actually do when we're talking with him and we do whatever we all decided to do. Because here's, here's what I'm really worried about, guys, is we're going to come to a time when we're divided about whether there's adverse impacts on this or that. And you all got, excuse me, some of the commissioners are going to be saying, well, the law requires that they apply. And I'm going to be saying, well, they notify the DPW. That's fine, because I don't see an adverse impact. And sometimes there are, there are cases where people are um, see adverse impacts where I don't see them. I guess I'll say it that way if that's objective enough for you. And so um, then it's going to be a question of, what, and you're just going to ignore the law to boot? And so I just think we, we just 
I don't mean to keep wailing and wailing. I'm just, I'm just a, obviously a little distressed at what we've done. I'll leave it there if that's what you want to do. Well, then I suggest if it's we issue an enforcement order on the work. And permitted work, which we would do. And and we, we do didn't it. lose any leverage, I don't think, nor did I think we it can, We'd gain. have to issue it against the town, and then the town can bring this person along. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, so that's, that's saying two very different things. That's obviously losing leverage. Well, again, I don't know what... I don't know what we could do to this. I don't think legally you should use a, a, a cudgel of uh, whether you're going to issue a certification of compliance for work done, which was shown to us before when they applied a year and a half. They showed us that original thing, so you could – they built it within what they asked to be permitted. I don't think it's appropriate legally to hold their certificate of compliance hostage based on something they did that's unpermitted. That's ours. I mean, that's what you would be doing. I, I don't see legally how we could do that or why we should. We can still issue an enforcement order. That doesn't change our leverage. If they have an open enforcement order, they cannot sell their property. So if you feel it's well, important... Well, they have an enforcement order on that property or on the, on the, on the, on the town property? On what property? It would be effectively on the town right. property. So of course they can go ahead and sell that property. We have given away our leverage. Well, I just I didn't legally see where we had the right to deny them that certification of compliance. I wouldn't issue a certification of compliance for someone who did illegal work on their property, which I think is the situation we have in other areas. Okay. Well. But it's a legitimate thing to bring up. That's why I said I appreciate it. I can see both sides of it, of your argument. Mm -hmm. I can. And I think, you know, in the future, we probably need to pay closer attention to what people are asking to do. Well, I think that, you know, they should have had a co-applicant as the DPW. Uh, that's where we blew it. Well, well Jeff said so the DPW knew what they had done there. And yeah, yes. So they approved it. Yeah, they essentially. They it. And yeah, the Butters yeah. would have had the ample chance to give Jeff a call or us a call. Right. So with well, the one of the abutters has been quite concerned about it, but it wasn't for the work done, it was for the loss of parking. Which is, a, you know, in Nantucket, that's a legitimate concern for people, of course. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean it's a concern for the commission. Mm -hmm. So do you, do other people have comments? Administrator, staff reports already been given? Yep. So, so move, move to adjourn. adjourn. Yep. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Yep. Meeting adjourned. <clears throat> and How do you know about that? Yeah. Folk that plan. We're still being reported. That didn't have in our packet. Had you seen that? Yeah. Was that because of the board report? It had been brought to my attention. <laughs> 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 yeah.